This time on The Natural House, we'll visit a sustainable mountain lodge that's both a unique blend of big city styles and a net zero energy home that produces as much energy as it consumes. In our on-site segments, we'll visit interior paint designers who create home healthy colors. And we'll tour the rebuilding center, Portland's natural resource for do-it-yourselfers. Later, we'll stop at a health-focused timber frame that celebrates the past while looking toward the future. All that and more coming up on The Natural House. Hi, I'm Pam Mahon, and welcome to The Natural House. While the market for sustainable and green building products topped six billion dollars this year, with more than 50 million people involved in the movement, building green, no matter where or how you choose to do it, is still an experiment in living and an adventure designed to last a lifetime. When this Portland couple decided to build their mountainside retreat, it had to be special in more ways than one. First, it had to be cutting edge green, bring big city style to the country, and though complex in design, it had to be simple enough for easy living. So how'd they do? Let's take a look. Parkdale, Oregon is a bite-sized hamlet just south of historic Hood River. And it's where the Kelly Woodford family built their home on the northern slope of Mount Hood. What really got us going on the idea of building a house by Mount Hood was the fact that um, all of us in our family, my wife and I, and our two boys all like to ski. And uh, it was our way of, you know, finding a way to reconnect with our teenage boys. This house is really laid out and designed to be a family gathering place. It's a place where community is more emphasized than sleeping spaces. We really have designed the house to have a lot of flex sleeping spaces, Murphy beds and hallways that can convert to bedrooms and have it really be a place where families could gather. We've lived in our house in Portland for 27 years and that's become a very regimented place. Up here, life is m much more easygoing. When we were young, in our 20s, our friends would drop by or we would drop by. Our friends, you never called and made a date. And I was hoping that this place would kind of recapture some of that so that if people were up here and they drove by and they saw our car, they would feel free to stop by and we've kind of lost that. Much of architect Liz Olberding's home plan is based on minimalist design principles and hinges on multi-use community space. The home-sealed Arctic entry is an Alaskan mudroom. Acting as an airlock, it prevents cold air from rushing in or warm air escaping the house. Just inside, the cement block family screening room puts the focus on group activities while separate futons repurpose the area as convertible sleeping space. In daylight, a public room at the top of the stairs is a quiet retreat. At night, at a Murphy bed and Soji screens, and it's a very private bedroom. From a design perspective, we wanted the house to be minimalist, just plain simple. Kind of bulletproof, I guess, because we, we planned on having lots of different people stay here. So we wanted it to be a place where folks would be comfortable and not worry about the furniture or whatever. The master bedroom is a study in minimalism, contrasting lush natural paints, plasters, and wood beams with exposed electrical conduit, micro accent lights, a steel ceiling, and gray block walls. Framing lumber is all FSC certified, and wood trim is reclaimed old growth from 100-year-old sinker logs rescued from the Columbia River. When we think and talk about building a house that's sustainable, a long life cycle is really important. And we think this house, the way we built it, it will last, uh, we hope, a few hundred years. I can see people in this house 200 years from now. To me, that's sustainability in its most true sense. A distinctive showcase for alternative power, heating, and cooling mechanisms the house is the first LEED silver certified home on the West Coast and just one of four such homes in the nation. 
I'm a builder and a house like this enables me to take risks that I otherwise really couldn't take with a regular client because some of the technologies and some of the design techniques that we utilized were kind of experimental and it was really fun to have the opportunity to take on some of those things without having to worry about anybody other than myself being unhappy with what the result might be. Walls and foundations are constructed with eco-friendly building blocks made from reclaimed wood and cement with an added layer of mineral wool insulation. The south-facing photovoltaic panels act as the home's power station, tracking the sun's movement throughout the day, then resetting after dark. The uh, photovoltaic panels that we have is a 3KW system. They are mounted on poles and they track the sun during the day, so they're more efficient than a panel you might find on the roof of a house. So it was very easy for me to make the decision to put the panels in the backyard, have them be more effective in the energy that they brought into the house. A net zero energy house is one that puts as much power back onto the grid as it takes off. In the summertime, we're putting all kinds of power back onto the grid. In January, we're taking power off the grid. But in the end, we're balancing between those two and using zero net energy. In the great room, high ceilings and large super insulated south facing windows frame Mount Hood. Acoustic baffling panels lower the hollow echo effect associated with high open interior spaces. The home's east-west orientation embraces the sun's passage and the downslope wind patterns bring natural ventilation, reducing heat and cooling requirements. Radiant heat below concrete floors conserves power, delivers a more reliable heat source, and lessens temperature fluctuations. In winter, the high-efficiency fireplace helps provide supplemental heating. The fireplace is a masonry fireplace, which is really kind of unusual these days because they are higher cost. But in this house, it was important because it really acts as a heat sink. So even long after the fire is out, the masonry around that fire is still putting heat out into the rest of the house, and it'll do it for actually, you know, a few days. The appliances were all selected to be as energy efficient as possible and are Energy Star rated. Appliances tend to be one of the biggest consumers of electricity in a house, so it's really important that we carefully select those. The countertops in the kitchen are two different kinds. One is paper stone, the other is ice stone. The paper stone is made with reclaimed newspapers and acrylic resins. The ice stone is a concrete countertop made with broken up beer bottle and wine bottle glass. Natural clay plaster walls and zero VOC paints draw vibrant colors from a distinctive palette. Probably one of the simplest, least costly things you can do on a house is use low VOC paints or no VOC paints. And of course, there's a lot of things you can do that cost a lot more, but you don't have to do those. So there's a balance between somebody's pocketbook and their commitment to energy efficiency. There's always a green alternative. You can do it at so many levels, and I think there's a misconception out there that it has to cost more. We kind of get a kick out of the fact that really this house defies any particular kind of architectural style or description of a style. We have the loft influences that you would see in big cities. We have the lodge kind of influence that you would see in mountain homes. We have an industrial kind of influence that you might see in commercial architecture. Definitely there's a lot of modernist influence. But none of those by themselves will describe this house. We weren't trying to develop some kind of new architectural style, we just wanted it to be personal to us. Neil Kelly Company, a company started by my dad 60 years ago, um, has been involved in some ways in sustainability uh, for a lot of years. We did our first solar demonstration house in 1979. So this house is really a, kind of an outcome of all that. It's, it's uh, just 
you know, a demonstration of where our roots go and what our values are. My father would love this house. I'm not sure that it's his architectural style, but he would love the feel of it. He would really like the green and sustainable aspects of it. We've been involved in this sort of thing for a long time, and uh, that was part of him, too. Stay tuned. There's more coming up on The Natural House. Hi, and welcome back to The Natural House. I'm Pam Mahon. When we talk about natural interior house paint, we're not just talking about matching nature's palette. We're talking about your family's health and what you can do to protect it. At Portland's Yolo Color House, designers Jamie Lowe and Virginia Young are creating a colorful line of home healthy interior paints while leaving toxic chemicals out of the mix. We as humans crave nature, being surrounded by nature. I mean, that's where we go to feel relaxed, to find serenity. And so to bring the colors of nature in indoors where we're living, it creates a more harmonious, livable environment. Traditional paints pose a danger because even though they may be water-based, uh, they still have chemical solvents that off-gas. Those solvents, called volatile organic compounds, are most often used in traditional paints and contribute to sick building syndrome. These days, we're building our houses so tight and efficiently, which is good, we want efficiency, but we're trapping all those pollutants inside. Low or zero VOC wall paints are a safe and colorful substitute for a traditionally toxic household product. Janie and I both have a background in fine art and we were doing a lot of color consulting. So what we did is we saw this need for a really high performing zero VOC paint. As soon as people understand what a zero VOC paint is, it's an easy switch over. Working from a palette of natural colors, the YOLO team is serving a growing marketplace of informed consumers. We've identified our customers as the low Haas market, and it's the lifestyles of health and sustainability. It's a growing market in the United States. The green customer is a really educated customer, and they're looking for depth in the products that they buy. The mission of Yolo Color House um, is to be environmentally responsible and socially responsible. In every decision that we make, we think about how it's impacting our world. We've chosen to use sustainable materials for our displays. We use 100% recycled paper for our labels and all of our packaging. Every decision that we have to make, we think about what does is, what is our footprint look like? We believe in creating products that really work, that are beautiful, and they're environmentally responsible. And that is what motivates us every day, and it's just what we're excited about. Stay tuned. There's more coming up on The Natural House. Hi, and welcome back to The Natural House. While the Kelly Woodford family house enjoys a timeless view of Mount Hood, Ron Hayes and Christy Carl's home in Eagle Creek, Oregon, shares a different sense of time and place. The Hayes Carl family homestead is a 2,000 square foot timber frame bungalow that incorporates a full range of new ideas and natural materials to define its deep green building values. The home's concept was initially shaped by concerns tied to the use of toxic materials. One of the reasons that I wanted to create a non-toxic environment was because Christy had had cancer just prior to our building. We wanted to build a house as toxin-free as possible because we didn't want to put any more environmental stress on our body. The centuries-old building style is an earthen wall timber frame technique. Timber frame has traditionally been the form of structure that was used throughout Europe, in Japan, in China for thousands of years. 
building with a timber frame is looking backwards in order to move forwards for a more sustainable building. The distinctively rich timbers are fitted together by hand-cut mortise and tenon joints and held tight by wood pegs. This house rekindled my interest in building homes that were alive for people. Having built homes for years, I've seen that you can walk into a beautiful home that doesn't have a soul. You don't feel uplifted. You don't feel alive. It's not part of the landscape. I think a home needs to be comfortable where people can move around in it so that they come in contact with each other in, in really nice ways. A home needs to meet each person's individual desires for what feels comforting to them. A large part of that for me is nature and the spirituality part. That's such a deep core part of me that it has to be reflected in my life for my house to be nurturing to me. The deep brown natural mud and gold straw flecked entry opens onto a serene welcoming alcove. The earthen clay plasters covering the walls are built on a base coat of clay harvested from a nearby hillside. What you see in the entry is the base layer of the plaster that's underneath all the walls in the house. To guard against outgassing, Ceilings, walls, and other painted areas are finished with toxin-free paints. The natural clay has a completely different ability to affect the indoor air quality. Walls made of sheetrock and latex paint act as a barrier. These walls are completely different. These are beautiful natural walls, but what you don't see underneath them is, well, to put it simply, dirt. Layers of straw and clay form the thermal mass behind the walls. Together with the mud plaster finish, this forms the breathable or living wall system. Breathable walls are allowing the indoor air to migrate on a molecular level to the exterior. We call this the truth window. It reveals the inner structure of the house. The first layer is the clay and straw. The second layer is the native clay. The third layer is pottery clay. Over that, there's clay plaster mixed with pigments that give it natural color. The house is designed around a central light core capped by two skylights and a fan that provides a naturally circulating updraft. Radiant heat rises from the concrete slab floor. To soften the earth advantage of concrete, wool rugs and soft cork flooring in the kitchen provide foot-friendly comfort. My favorite place in the house is the meditation room. And for some reason, it has the best energy in it, the best feeling in it. It feels very peaceful. Everybody who's opened the door goes, oh. It's a sacred space. And sometimes they think it's the windows. Sometimes I think it's because of the intention we put into it. It has Ron's spiritual work, his shamanic work. It has my spiritual work with, you know, my healing and my meditation work. Most interior wood has been reclaimed for use as door, window, and baseboard trim. With my trim, I'm taking something that's taken nature 300, maybe 500 years to grow, and I'm giving it an opportunity to live another two or maybe 300 years in my house. Outside, the low-slung concrete tiled roof with an expected lifetime of 50 years flows naturally into locally harvested cedar wall siding. Upstairs, the overlook passage serves as an office and the scaffolding used during construction has become the office desk. The master bedroom features blue-tinted plaster walls and a balcony view of woods and a running stream. The adjacent master bath centers on a large soaking tub. Clay plaster walls and stone tile are both attractive, toxin-free alternatives to gas-emitting synthetic bathroom products. When moist, 
natural clay bathroom walls exude a deep, earthy fragrance, and when wet, they fully absorb moisture within minutes. Our house demonstrates that you can use traditional and natural materials and still create a house that feels comfortable and looks conventional. In the healing of my cancer, part of the process was learning about connecting with nature spirits. It's not like I see fairies, but I have a sense of these entities that everything does have a spiritual essence. The plants do, the land does, the, you know, the wood does, everything does. So it was a process of going inside and calling them in, calling in the deva of the land, calling in the deva of our family, calling in the deva of the house, and asking them what it was that we were supposed to build. And so oftentimes we'd get to a place and Ron would say, what do you think? And I'd say, I don't know. I don't, I don't think these things. I have to go inside and ask because it's not like my personal preference. It's what, what's to be done here, what's right? Because I have a very small, narrow vision of what would be right for me, but this is, a, this is bigger. Life's bigger than just me. For more information on the ideas and products you've seen on The Natural House, visit us on the web at thenaturalhouseonline.com. There are so many brand new products reaching the green market every day, but the three R's of the sustainable building world will always be recycle, reuse, and renew. And at Portland's world famous rebuilding center, they're finding a new purpose and a new life for just about everything. A day's end destination for builders and contractors, the center receives an average of six tons of used materials daily, material that would otherwise have found its way into landfills. The Rebuilding Center is recognized as one of the first steps in green building. Whenever somebody's going to do a, a, a remodel or a new development, if there's existing materials there, the first step is keeping those materials out of the landfill. The nonprofit center sells used building and remodeling materials from a 52,000 square foot warehouse. Sustainable building is not just about what's green or not, it's also about finding value in recycled materials. At Portland's Rebuilding Center, customers can find just about anything they need for reuse in other construction projects. The Rebuilding Center accepts the largest variety of used building materials out of any place in our region. We literally accept anything from a doorknob to an entire home. So you can find doorknobs, lumber to build a home, Everything that you would find in a new building materials store, you'll find here and more. The Rebuilding Center is the largest nonprofit used building materials resource in North America. If people are doing a remodel and they want to find things that match what already exists in their home, especially if they have an older home, this is a great resource. Our inventory changes on average every 15 minutes, and we move through here on average every seven tons a day which is about the equivalent of three to five 20-foot flatbed truckloads each day. I always tell people, if you don't find it here today, you can check tomorrow. It's just kind of got some great energy that way. Looking for a hot tub, chandelier, wood beam, or doorknob? Chances are you'll find it at a rebuilding center near you. When it comes to sustainability, no one of us can do everything, but we can all do something. And together, we can make a difference. So whether you're driving a brand new hybrid, building with a soft green footprint, or simply recycling, when you have a real choice today, think about tomorrow and think green. I'm Pam Mahon. See you next time on The Natural House.